Hi, here we are ladies. It's good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you even though we're not really seeing you. Yes. But we know that you're watching us, so yes. good to sort of see you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the day that we're recording this, we've got snow. It feels like Christmas, but it's still mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. But it's beautiful. Yes. But we are excited to be back together again. Yes, we are. Kelly, you just got back from London. I did. Blimey, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Blimey. Blimey. What's the best thing you ate in London? Oh, boy. Shepherd's pie. <gasps> Ooh, yes. is that with like mashed potatoes on top? Yes, we had, we went to a, a real English restaurant and uh -huh. we, there, there, it wasn't fast food at all. It uh -huh. was real shepherd's pie. Ooh. And uh, Michael and Vanessa took us to yeah. dinner and to see The Mouse Trap by <gasps> Agatha Christie. Oh. So that was really a sweet thank you gift to us oh, from them. Oh, how and fun. The shepherd's pie was incredible. Wow. That's yes. really great. Now I need to go home and figure out how to make shepherd's pie. Oh, I've got to make it better than I do. That's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, well, mm. welcome back. Thank you. We're excited to be in the I Am Statements mm -hmm. again um, this month. So maybe I'll start us off in prayer and okay. then we'll jump in. Dear Lord, we do thank you so much that you are the great I Am who always has been and always will be. We thank you so much for this word that you have for us today. I pray that you would implant it deep in my heart, Kelly's heart, and in every mom's heart that's going to be listening this month. Help us see that you are who you say who you are. Help us trust your good character. And may that give us strength and joy to um, go about our days joyfully serving you with purpose because of who you are, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we are going to jump in today. Jesus, the I am statement, I am the door. Well, there are many competing voices coming at moms today that tell you what you must do to be a good mom, mm. right? Well, the, some of the voices sound like, don't feed them processed food. <laughs> don't let them have sugar. Let them express themselves. Give them lots of experiences. Or maybe you feel pulled in many directions, trying to achieve perfection in your home, mm. your fitness routine, or community involvement. Mm. How about the voice of well-meaning older moms that says what? Enjoy them while you have them. Oh, boy. Because they're going to be gone before you know it. I'm so guilty of saying that to y'all. Me too. <laughs> I'm also guilty of rolling my eyes when people said it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, as one, I would ask some of the younger moms in my growth group, and she said, that's a hard one to hear because when your toddler is throwing a tantrum in the bread aisle, she says, I'm supposed to enjoy this. <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Understood. Understood. Mm -hmm. So trying to keep up with it all can kind of suck the life out of you. Furthermore, our current culture and sometimes even our church cultures can be quite judgmental about its preferences. Mm -hmm. Well, there is one voice that we need to listen to for life, and he promises abundant life in his name. There is only one way to that abundant life, and that is through the door of Jesus Christ. Mm. Through the door of Jesus Christ is the only path to justification, mm. salvation, and eternal life. Mm. So, ladies, we are not saved by our school choices for our kids, mm -hmm. our political p opinions, or our perfect homes. Mm. The amount of children we have does not save us. Adoption, foster care does not save us. Working in the home does not save us. Working outside the home does not save us. Disciplined quiet times do not save us. Mm. All these things might be good, but only as, walk, as we walk through the narrow door of Jesus Christ, dropping that huge burden of sin as Christian mm. did in Pilgrim's Progress, will we be able to enter into the fold, the kingdom. And from there, as we will see in this chapter, we listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd as he leads us in the path of life and life abundant 
in his name. John 20, 31 says, But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, and that in believing in him you might have life in his name. Amen. So this is the theme verse of the book of John. Jesus is telling us through his seven I am statements written in this book that he is the Christ, the promised Messiah, and in believing we might have life in his name. So Jesus patiently, beautifully, with pictures and real life illustrations, is saying, believe I am who I say that I am, and you will have true and eternal life in my name. So, so far we have learned that Jesus has said of himself that he is the bread of life, mm -hmm. like Kelly talked about last time. He said, I am the light of the world. And today we come to, I am the door. So let's jump into our passage. It's this uh, section is found in John 10, 1 through 10, and I'm going to have Kelly read it for us. Okay. <clears throat> truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Mm, I love mm, that. I know, right? Till 10. <laughs> oh, I thought you said four. I'm sorry. Oh, I probably A stranger <laughs> they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Mm, thank you. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean when Jesus says in verse 7, I am the door of the sheep? And again in verse 9, I am the door. To be honest with you, out of all of these I am statements, this is the one I understood the least. Mm -hmm. I mean, a door, it just seemed like such a common kind of inanimate object, especially compared to light, bread, good shepherd, resurrection, life, way, truth, fine. Yet, I'm learning that sometimes the least obvious truths in the Bible can end up being some of the best treasures because they force us to dig, and that's where we find the gold. So let's jump in. The context of this section is, is uh, the chapter before, chapter 9, where Jesus has just spit on the ground, made mud, mm. and placed it on the eyes of a man born blind. He told the man to go wash in the pool of Siloam. He did, and the man who lived in darkness all his life now can see because the light of the world healed him. Well, there were some characters who were not so happy that this man who was forced to beg, who was blind, could now see. Why? Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, and they were not happy about that. Well, you might already be familiar with the story. Please read it this month, along with chapter 10. The story is full of drama and some humor. The Pharisees, jealous of Jesus, full of self-interest, condemned his healing on the Sabbath. They accused the formerly blind man of being born in sin. They sought to intimidate him and his parents, and they kicked him out of the fold, the synagogue. Hmm. It is in this context of these events that we now go into chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. I've broken it up into three parts. Part 1, Jesus the true shepherd, verses 1 through 6. Part two, Jesus, the true entrance to the sheep, verses seven through nine. And finally, part three, Jesus, the true source of life for his sheep. So in verse one, it starts with the words, truly, truly. Mm -hmm. So literally, these words mean, amen, amen. Trustworthy, trustworthy, surely, surely, verily, verily, truth, truth. 
this is truth. So whenever Jesus is saying truly, truly, we better listen. And he says, he who does not enter the sheepfold. Well, in that time and still today in many places, sheep were kept in a fold surrounded by a rock wall and closed by a gate. Other Bible versions use the word gate. Jesus says, I am the gate. The sheep were brought in at night and the shepherd himself, this is really cool, you guys, the shepherd himself would sometimes sleep in the entrance of the sheepfold for protection. And it is in this context that Jesus is saying, I am the gate, I am the door. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful self-sacrificing picture of Jesus. Jesus goes on to say, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. Like the door to your house or apartment, proper guests or family members enter by the front door with your glad permission because they have no ill intent in your home, which is meant to be a place of refuge and safety. They are let in by the good intentions of those who enter. If someone is trying to get into your house by a basement window or a mm. rooftop or a mm. back patio door, that man is a thief and a robber intent on evil and harm. I remember a few years ago, our daughter was still in college. She was visiting us. It was about 1130 at night and Dan and I had just gone to bed and all of a sudden she came into our room and she said, Mom, Dad, the garage door just opened. Somebody just opened our garage door. Remember that? <gasps> oh. And we ran out and our garage door was indeed open and the front door of our car was open and somebody had opened up our car and pushed our garage door. Mm -hmm. And it had just happened, so I still have a funny memory of my husband oh. running up and down <laughs> our street saying, get back here, you coward. <laughs> <laughs> up and down the street in his pajamas yelling. He has, definitely has the fight versus the fight or flight instinct, oh, but we never boy. found whoever it was. Well, mm. in the same way, Jesus is telling his audience then, who would have clearly understood sheep pen and sheep analogies, and us today that, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm. Jesus is the one who has only good intentions for his sheep. He wants us to trust his character. So the life of a shepherd was, and still is, a life of constant toil looking after dumb sheep. Mm. They're easily scared and need help just to survive. I don't know if you guys saw this little video. It was going around. There was a video of like a, a sheep that was stuck in like a ravine or like a mm. kind of a ditch. And you see the shepherd pulling, pulling, pulling the sheep out. And the sheep gets out, shakes itself out, and bounces, 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 and then jumps right back in and gets stuck in the ditch again. Oh, <laughs> Did you see that no, one? No, I didn't. <laughs> you guys, look it up. It's, it's hilarious, and it's just such a vivid picture mm. of uh, the shepherd and sheep analogies. They need a shepherd. Sheep need a shepherd to protect them from those who want to harm them. Mm -hmm. They need a shepherd to guide them and feed them. And because the shepherd owns them, he is completely invested. Mm. He can be completely trusted to care for them. Moms, you would do anything to make sure your kids mm. are protected and Amen. led and cared for. I mean, every year we all used to, and you guys stress out about schooling choices because you want the very best for your little lambs. Well, how much greater is the care of the great shepherd for us, his sheep? We can trust his character. Yes. He enters through the door or gate because he is the legitimate and rightful owner and caretaker of the sheep. Mm. Those who seek to enter any other way than the door have evil intentions for the sheep. Back in the day and still today, thieves and robbers would sneak over the wall at night. They would slit the sheep's throats so that they would not make a noise. And then they would throw them over the wall and take the sheep for their wool and for their food. Wow. Verse three says, to him, the gatekeeper opens. The gatekeeper recognizes the one who has proper access to the sheep. The sheep hear his voice. Mm. The sheep, his called ones, this pictures his calling of salvation and his call to follow him. And he calls his own sheep, listen to this, by name. Mm. I love that part. Mm -hmm. He calls them by name. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd 
in the same way as Jesus named all the stars. How much more is this beautiful and intimate truth that the Good Shepherd calls us, his sheep, by name? Before God made us, he knew us and called us, as it says in Ephesians 1. Uh, Isaiah 43, 1 says, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Mm. Beautiful picture. Verse 3 goes on to say, And he leads them out. In verse 4, When he has brought all of out his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. This is the call to discipleship, to follow the master wherever he leads and learn mm. from him. True sheep recognize the voice of their shepherd and they follow him. Jesus is the word. His voice for us today is heard in his word. We are to daily follow that voice and no other. Recently, I've had a few friends confide in me that their life is not looking at all how they would have hoped. Yet they are all intent on following their good shepherd wherever he leads, even if they can't see or understand. They are trusting his guidance even when the shepherd is leading him through the valley because they ultimately know that surely goodness and mercy are going to follow them all the days of their life. Mm. Verse 5 says, A stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they do not follow the voice of strangers. Mm. The stranger does not have the sheep's best interest in mind, mm -hmm. or worse, they seek to harm the sheep for selfish gain. The sheep know to flee. Well, again, what are the voices we must be careful to run from today that would only be for our harm? I know for me personally, it's the voice of myself. You have said, and maybe it was Tripp who said it, you are the most influential person in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, there's also the voice that today would question God's plan for authority structures, gender roles, or questioning his character. Mm -hmm. Eve listened to the voice of the servant that, sa that said, did God really say? Mm -hmm. So questioning God's ways and words. Or maybe you have forgotten that you were and are saved by grace today. Like the Pharisees in the context of this passage, you're seeking to earn favor with God by your works. Jesus is the door, the one and only entrance into acceptance by the Father into the fold. We enter by His grace alone. Mm. Let us follow Him all the way to glory by His grace alone and be careful not to fall back into the rut of self-righteous works. Don't get me wrong, we are saved unto good works, but never by them. Mm -hmm. So verse 6 says, This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The natural person does not, un does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So, this verse is here possibly because the Pharisees were not able to understand because they were blind. Mm -hmm. um, and yet the blind man was able to see. Mm -hmm. So we have seen point one, Jesus, the true shepherd. And we come to point two, Jesus, the true entrance to the sheepfold. Verse seven. <clears throat> so Jesus again said to them, here's the words again, truly, truly, I mm -hmm. say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Here, Jesus patiently re-emphasizes the utter truthfulness of what he's about to say with the statements, truly, truly. Seems like we should listen whenever we see those words in the Bible, mm. whenever Jesus says that. And they are all throughout the book of John. Mm. In verses 1 through 6, he's telling them that he is the one who enters through the door. And now in verse 7, he states, I am the door of the sheep. Spurgeon has described it this way. The illustration is exceedingly simple. Who is there that would not understand it? He means that as by passing through the door, we enter into a house. So by passing through Christ Jesus by faith, we enter into eternal life and enter into the true church and ultimately shall enter into heaven. I loved how simple that yes. was. 
Good Good old Spurgeon. Thank you, Spurgeon. Mm -hmm. There is no other way to the Father and into the kingdom. There is no other entrance into God's kingdom than through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, as we will talk about later on this year, says, He is the way, the truth, and the life. I love this verse, Acts 4, 12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we may be saved. It's tempting to be synchronistic. What do I mean by that? Jesus plus my ideas, Jesus plus my sin, Jesus plus all my good works. No, those won't fit through the door. You only mm -hmm. get through the narrow door by going through Jesus and all of Jesus mm -hmm. and nothing else. John 10, 8 says, Jesus says, All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. So who are these thieves and robbers he's talking about? Again, we look at our context. The religious leaders of the day, the bad shepherds of the past, did not care for God's sheep, but instead used them for selfish gain. Mm. They used their position of authority not to feed, guide, protect, and warn, but for selfish gain. Mm. We saw that clearly as the blind man was cast out of the fold and his parents were intimidated by the Pharisees. Ezekiel 34 contrasts the evil shepherds with the good shepherds. Kelly's going to read uh, Ezekiel 34, 1 through 16. It's kind of a long little section, but it is so fitting. So sit back and soak it up as Kelly reads it to us. Ezekiel 34. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Ah, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered, because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered. They wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, with none to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely because my sheep have become a prey and my sheep have become food for all the wild beasts, since there was no shepherd and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves and have not fed my sheep, therefore you shepherds hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding, of the she their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths, that they may not be food for them. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from for the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Mm, thank you, Kelly. Mm. What a bit, beautiful picture that is yeah, of wow. Jesus the Good Shepherd. And I think mm. it's next time that you're going to go deeper yes. into what that means. Jesus the door to the sheep. Well, the end of verse 8 says, But the sheep did not listen to them. 
who is them, who was just described here, the evil, the shepherds that did not have the best intention for the sheep. Like the blind man in chapter 9 who found Jesus and saw him and believed him and worshiped him. Mm. Well, verse 9 again says, I am the door. Ephesians 2.18 says, For through him, Jesus, we both have access into one spirit to the Father. Mm. I love the word access. It seems to further describe what it means that Jesus is the door. Jesus the door gives us access to the best thing ever, mm. the Father. And there is no other path for justification. Only through the door of Jesus. Why is this tremendous news for us moms today? I'm not saved by my, by my superior mom skills. I'm not saved by everybody liking me. I'm not saved by my husband <coughs> admiring me. When all these things fail, when you feel like a lousy mom, your friend is mad at you, your husband is ignoring you, you are still justified by the only way, the only one, the only entrance to true life, Jesus, the door. Verse 9 goes on to say, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. What does saved mean? We've learned that it means delivered, protected, rescued, healed. From what? Our sin. Sin is a trespass, kind of like the thieves and robbers, and that's what we were. Mm. Through Jesus the door, we find a safe place, a shelter, like our homes. And from that place of safety spiritually, we go in and out and find pasture. What does that part mean? Well, sheep were brought into the fold at night by the shepherd, and during the day, he would lead them out to find food and water. The word pasture reminds us of Psalm 23, to find a place of nourishment. It literally means spread. So like when you oh. walk someplace and you say, wow, what a mm -hmm. spread when someone has made you a big meal. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Go in and out and find pasture. Oh. When we enter by the door, Jesus Christ, he saves us and guides us and feeds us all along the way. Psalm 121, 8 says, The Lord God will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. <clears throat> Beautiful picture again. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've seen that Jesus is the true shepherd, point one. Point two, Jesus, the true entrance to the sheepfold. And now we come to point three, Jesus, the true source of life for mm. the sheep. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Mm. Again, Jesus contrasts himself with the false shepherds by reminding his listeners of what their intentions are compared to his. Theirs are to kill and destroy, and his is to give life and give it abundantly. Mm, which one should we trust? Mm. Through the only door of Jesus, we enter into the fold, into the care of a good shepherd who purchased those sheep at the cost of his life. We can trust our good shepherd. What else can he do to prove his love? Mm. He came to save, feed, and protect. The thief comes to rob and kill. Only Jesus has the right credentials. Trust him. Believe in him. Mm -hmm. He came that we might have life. We were spiritually dead. He made us alive in him. The punishment for our sin is death, and he took it in our place. Mm. We are alive in him, and in him we will never die. And that is where life abundant comes from when he talks about life abundantly. What does life abundant mean? Is it vacations? Spa days? No trouble? Nope. In this world, we will have trouble and we also have lots of blessings, but true abundant life is eternal life. So John 28 says, I gave them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. What a beautiful promise. It's the matchless gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus that will exceed all our hopes and dreams. Have you ever experienced abundance beyond your expectations? Mm. One time, a college friend of Dan's, uh, we went to see them in New York, and he is from India, and his wife made us an Indian spread of food that I've 
never experienced in my life. There was so much food that she had prepared probably for days wow. <laughs> for us. And wow. uh, we were so overwhelmed by her kindness and generosity. And we also kept looking at our teenage sons to eat more because we couldn't <laughs> eat. They were like, I can't. <laughs> we couldn't eat at all. It was so much food. That was an abundance beyond our expectation. Mm -hmm. I think another one was uh, when Dan and I first got to go to Hawaii. And we just saw the beauty of that oh, place. Yeah. And the beauty and was beyond my expectation. Mm -hmm. So when I think of abundant life, these experiences that I've had, and I'm sure you guys have had experiences mm -hmm. like that, um, they're just an appetizer, right? Yeah. They're just a foretaste of the abundant life that we have in Christ now and forever. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to see what abundant life is, read Ephesians 1. It's mm -hmm. all our spiritual blessings in Christ. Mm -hmm. He uses the word lavished on us. Mm -hmm. Lavished on us. That is a term of abundance. Um, the abundance that we will have forever in Christ is pictured in Revelation 7, 17. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear for, from mm -hmm. their eyes. So in Christ, we have life that, that is satisfying, purposeful, joyful, eternal. We get this life the moment we walk through the only door, Jesus, and we have it for all eternity. Well, you might say, I don't always feel like I'm living in light of this abundant life you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was home with our little ones, uh, Dan would come home and I would say, what did you do today? And he would say, oh, I went to lunch with so-and-so. Really? Where'd you go? Oh, I went to this new restaurant. Really? What'd you eat? Oh, we had the best whatever. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> what did you eat? Leftover hot dogs and mac and cheese. Yes. And yeah. then the kids threw up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Is this my abundant life? <laughs> but I would have to struggle with jealousy. I kind of wanted to go to that restaurant. <laughs> so I just remember those days, and you guys are probably there. Oh, they're, they're in it right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. In Christ, though, our joys and our deepest disappointments are never without purpose. A man we know regularly says, I want to live a life of eternal significance. What he's saying is, I want to live an abundant life. What does that look like? Well, in the Bread of Life section, Jesus said in John 6, 27, Do not work for food that perishes, but for that food that endures to eternal life, mm -hmm. which the Son of Man will give you. Work each day for that which will last forever. What is that? God, His Word, and His people. Mom's abundant life looks like every day following the voice of your Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm by being in His Word and communing with Him in, in prayer. It looks like loving your husbands, if you have one, and your children as unto the Lord. It looks like loving your neighbors and being a light. It looks like staying connected to the flock, the church, where you can be fed and kept safe. Because mm -hmm. we know what happens to isolated, wandering sheep. Right. They are in big trouble, right? So in conclusion, the entrance to the sheepfold, gate, kingdom of God, God's family, is only through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who has said, I am the door. When we enter through his sacrifice on our behalf, we enter into the care of a good shepherd who calls us by name and leads us all the way to life, life abundant, mm -hmm. life eternal. Mm -hmm. So keep listening and following the only one who has the credentials the only one who's purchased you with his blood, the only one who has proved his love for you at the cost of his life. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.32 is a verse I remind myself of often. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Mm -hmm. I love that verse. It's so good. Oh. So these I am statements are written so that you may believe Trust His character, His promises. He's the only entrance into eternal, abundant life. He's the only voice we need to listen to. His path is the only one we need to follow. Why? Because He's not a thief or a robber or a wolf, but the door, the gate, the one who sleeps in the entryway for our protection. Mm. Listen to Him. Follow Him. 
Rest in the justification you have only in him. Jesus who says, I am the door. This talk made me think of the hymn, Not in Me, that we sing at church. Mm. I'm just going to read it. No list of sins I have not done, no list of virtues I pursue, no list of those I am not like can earn myself a place with you. No humble dress, no fervent prayer, no lifted hands, no tearful song, no recitation of the truth can justify a single wrong. My righteousness is Jesus' life. My debt was paid by Jesus' death. My weary load was borne by him, and he alone can give me rest. No separation from the world, no work I do, no gift I give can cleanse my conscience, cleanse my hands. I cannot cause my soul to live, but Jesus the door died and rose again. The power of death is overthrown. Mm -hmm. My God is merciful to me my, and merciful in Christ alone. My righteousness is Jesus the door's life. My debt was paid by Jesus the door's death. My weary load was borne by him, and he alone can give me rest. Yes, he alone can give me rest. So thank you, ladies. May you find that rest in Jesus the door this month as you meditate on him. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that blessed my heart <clears throat> this morning. Mm. That really did. That thank really you. did. And we are sure praying for all of you. Yes. Um, we know that you are in a challenging season of life. Mm -hmm. And we want you to grab onto these truths and meditate on them as much as you're able to because your tasks want to steal truth because you're working hard and you're tired and your brain wants to shut off. Mm -hmm. But run to the Lord and say, okay, what is true about you? And mm -hmm. this is true about Him. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need. So mm -hmm. we're very thankful to the Lord for what He's doing in all of your lives. And please let us know what you're learning about Him. Mm -hmm. Linda and I want to know. For Thank sure. you.